Please rise as you're able for our call to worship. There was a time when we were a people who dwelled in darkness, but God has given us the true light, Jesus Christ. The water of baptism brings us healing and reconciliation. It is a symbol of nourishment and cleansing. Please remain standing for our processional song. You may be seated. And welcome to Founders Metropolitan Community Church. This morning, we're so delighted to see you in this house of worship. If you are brand new with us today, would you just wave at me and let me wave back at you? There's somebody waving at the back. We want to just say welcome. We're glad that you're here. Welcome. We're always delighted to see you in this place to worship with us. If it's your first time, well, welcome. Please know that if you don't have a church home, you can make this your church home. Amen. We're delighted to have you. We want to say hello to those folks who are joining us online. Welcome. We're delighted to see you here this morning. Always check in and let us know that you're here. Let us know that you're watching. Wherever you are in the world, we know that we have people visiting with us uh, that are just faithful, faithful, faithful to be here every week. And we're delighted that you are here with us online. And... For those of you who are right here in the sanctuary, we want to say, welcome. Would you take just a couple of minutes and welcome one another to this place?
morning's first reading is taken from the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, verses 34 through 38, taken from the message version. Peter fairly exploded with his good news. It's God's own truth. Nothing could be plainer. God plays no favorites. It makes no difference who you are or where you're from. If you want God and are ready to do as God says, the door is open. The message God sent to the children of Israel, that through Jesus Christ, everything is put together again. Well, God's doing it everywhere, among everyone. You know the story that of what happened in Judea. It happened, it began in Galilee after John preached a total life change. Then Jesus arrived from Nazareth, anointed by God with the Holy Spirit, ready for action. He went through the country helping people and healing everyone who was beaten down by the devil. He was able to do all this because God was with him. Please rise for this morning's second gospel reading. This morning's second reading is taken from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 3, verses 13 through 17, and St. John, chapter 1, verses 29 through 39, reading from the Message Version. Jesus then appeared, arriving at the Jordan River from Galilee. He wanted John to baptize him. John objected, I am the one who needs to be baptized, not you. But Jesus insisted, do it. God's work, putting, all, putting things right all these centuries, is coming together right now in this baptism. So John did it. The moment Jesus came out, out of the baptismal waters, the skies opened up and he saw God's spirit. It looked like a dove descending and landing upon him. And along with the spirit, a voice this is my son, chosen and marked by my love, delight of my life. The very next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and yelled out, Here he is, God's Passover lamb. He forgives the sins of the world. This is the man I've been talking about, the one who comes after me but is really ahead of me. I knew nothing about who he was, only this that my task has been to get Israel ready to recognize him as the God revealer. That is why I came here baptizing with water, giving you a good bath, and scrubbing sins from your life so you can get a fresh start with God. John clinched his witness with this. I watched the spirit like a dove flying out of the sky, making itself at home in him. I repeat, I knew nothing about him except this. The one who authorized me to baptize with water told me, the one on whom you see the Spirit come down and stay, this one will baptize with the Holy Spirit. That's exactly what I saw happen, and I'm telling you this. There is no question about it. This is the Son of God. The next day, John was back at his post with two disciples who were watching. He looked up, saw Jesus walking nearby, and said, Here he is, the pass God's Passover lamb. The two, the two disciples heard him and went after Jesus. Jesus looked over his shoulder and said to them, What are you after? They said, Teacher, where are you staying? He replied, Come along and see for yourself. Hear what the Spirit says today. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
and you may be seated. So if you've been following along the last few weeks, you know that um, four weeks ago, we had a new baby born, right? A new baby Jesus. And then the next week, we had the Magi who came, and Jesus was already two years old. It's amazing how Bible time flies. <laughs> Jesus is already two years old. He's in the terrible twos, and the Magi bring these gifts. And then last week, he has gone all the way to age 12 and gets left behind in the city without his parents even noticing, oh my goodness, sort of like Kevin on Home Alone. He just gets left behind. And now this week, he's gone from 12 to 30. Well, my goodness, he ages fast. In the day's reading, we find that Jesus comes to uh, the waters where John, the baptizer, some people call him John the Baptist, I prefer to call him the baptizer, because that's what he did. Um, there weren't Baptists back in those days, by the way. <laughs> That's just a translation thing. So um, here's Jesus coming to John the baptizer, and John's been preaching about Jesus. He's been telling people about this Jesus. Here's, here's, there's one that's coming after me. There's somebody that I'm preparing you to receive for yourself. Now, we preachers do that all the time. We try to come in here and talk to you so that you open up your heart, so that you receive what God has for you. It's not so much what I have for you or what the music has for you. What does God have for us today? That's why we say, hear what the Spirit says today. What is the Spirit saying for you today? What do you need to take from this time of gathering together? And John says, there's somebody coming after me. I'm just here. I'm giving you a new message I know it's not what you're used to hearing. I know I've taken these traditional stories that we grew up with, and I'm twisting them a little bit. I'm preparing you for something new. I'm just kind of plowing the dirt here, getting ready for a new crop, because the new planter is coming to give you something else, to meet your needs, to meet you where you are. And then as John baptizes all of these new people, we don't know how long this went on, but he went on for a while baptizing new people into this new way of thinking. And then one day he looks up, and who's standing there but Jesus himself? And of course he recognizes him, he knows this is Jesus, and they get into an argument at the water. Now this is the way to start, is it not? They get in an argument. Now, it's not a knockdown, drag out fight. It's just a disagreement. And it's all about John not feeling worthy. Uh oh, I hit a note. Somebody didn't feel worthy at some point in their life. Amen. But he says, I'm not worthy to baptize you. So you got to baptize me too. Baptize me. And John turns it around and says, no, -uh, I'm not doing that. I, I'm, I need for you to baptize me. You've got this backwards. You, I, yes, I'm a good teacher, but you're a super teacher. I'm good at what I'm doing, but you're better. You're the one we've been waiting for. You have the message that we've all been waiting for. So I need for you to come and baptize me. And Jesus says, no, you're not getting this. I've waited. Remember last week when I preached about Jesus being a little precocious and being in the temple and how he, he thought that he was grown and was ready to start his ministry right then, but then he didn't quite get there and his mom and dad said, oh, you're not ready yet. You come on home. And you keep doing what you're supposed to do until that day comes. So he went on home at 12 years old. And then from 12 to 30, he's in preparation for his ministry. That took a long time. You know, sometimes we feel called to do something. We think we're supposed to do it today. And we forget all about the training we're supposed to go through to get there. And we forget, especially in this day and age where everything is instant, we think we're supposed to start right now. It's supposed to happen immediately. And even if I'm supposed to, oh, well, how's the quickest way I can get this done? 
so I can get out there and do what I'm called to do. But sometimes it takes years. It took Jesus a lot of years to get to that point where he was ready to launch his ministry. And he says, John, you don't understand. I am here right now to, to inaugurate this ministry. Something new is about to take place, and baptism is one of those signs. It's about going in and washing off the old and coming up clean for something new. And he says, I need for you to baptize me so that we can launch this ministry together. But Jesus made even a bigger point. Jesus let John know that he, while it was his ministry, it really wasn't just his ministry. He was building a team of people already. Right then, Jesus let him know, I'm not doing this ministry by myself. This is our ministry. You've already been a part of this ministry before I got here. You've already been a part. You've been in this ministry before I even stepped up to the water. And so I need you to keep doing the ministry you're doing. You're part of the ministry team. I need you. I can't do it all by myself. And I think sometimes we, we pastors are the worst. We really are. We think I can do this all by myself. And, and I'm going to tell you, you go to some of our small churches where you don't have a lot of volunteers and you do find out that you end up doing it by yourself a lot of times. And you're amazed at what you can pull off. I'm just telling you. The good news is that most of the time, even in our smaller churches, there's usually a few people that will step up to help. And then sometimes, I will tell you, the church in Chattanooga, oops, I shouldn't have said that out loud. I'll tell you, the church in Chattanooga, they have an overrun of people that are stepping up. Anybody in the church, just about, will step up to do anything that you want them to do. They have lots of leadership. Not many followers, but a lot of leadership. I'll let you digest that. They're wonderful, too. They're wonderful people. But Jesus is building a ministry team, and he says, wait a minute, just because I showed up, you're not done. You still have ministry to do. You still have things yet to do. And then John finally relents, and Jesus goes down in the water, and Jesus, maybe they baptized each other. Wouldn't that be something? I always think they, that even though it wasn't recorded, that maybe Jesus did baptize John just as John baptized Jesus and says, we're in it together. Let's do it together. But something happened really special when Jesus came up out of the water. And that was, not only do, does the Spirit come on to him. Now, they, re, re, they relate this like a dove coming out of heaven and alighting on him. Now, I don't know if it was an actual dove or not, or if it was really just something that people sensed that came from on high and just came over him. And I, I know that we all know, any of you that grew up in church know this already. You've seen it if you've been around here. There are times you can just see somebody and know that the Spirit is on them. And, and I mean, you just know they're in the Spirit in this moment. And maybe it was like that. Everybody noticed something's going on with this Jesus. And then this loud, thunderous voice comes out of nowhere and says, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. This is my child in whom I'm well pleased. So the Spirit comes. Now, isn't that pretty dramatic? You know, if you want a launch of your ministry having a voice come out of heaven, a thundering voice out of heaven, and, and something that alights on you like, like you would a dove that comes on you that everybody notices, that's pretty dramatic. Jesus was not opposed to drama, obviously. That was a, a major coming out party. A major coming out party. That's the way to start a ministry. But you know, it doesn't stop there. 
Did you notice that after he comes out of the water, after he moves on from that day, John is still teaching, and we find this out in the next, the, the, the last part of that reading. John is still teaching people. He still has disciples, and he tells two of them. They see Jesus walk by, and they say, who, who is that? And, and, and John says, that's the one. That's the one I've been telling you about. He points away from himself to something higher. He points from his good teaching to super teaching. He points to the one. He says, that is the one I've been preaching about. That's the one you've been waiting for. And what did they do? They started following Jesus. Now notice they didn't go and talk to him immediately. They just started following him. We sometimes get that backwards. We think we're supposed to talk to God first and then we follow. But they started following just because they recognized the Spirit still on him. They knew that John had told them the truth. They knew this really was the person they could tell. There was an anointing on Jesus that they hadn't seen on anyone else. There was something different about him. And so they started following. And Jesus... Jesus recognizing in them this curiosity, maybe, this desire to follow him, maybe. Whatever it was, Jesus looks over, he keeps looking over his shoulder. I love this image of Jesus looking over his shoulder. Jesus looking over his shoulder, <clears throat> maybe like John Collins with a big puffy <laughs> sleeve. Jesus looks over his shoulder and he says, what are you looking at? What are you looking at? Now, it, if, you know, we've all probably done that a little sarcastically to someone. I don't think Jesus was being sarcastic. I think Jesus wanted to make sure they knew what they were looking at. Jesus wanted to make sure they knew who he was. And the very fact that they were following him before they ever started talking to him, told him something. I think it spoke to him. I think he, he started realizing this team, this ministry team is about to get larger. This, this, these are the first two followers. These are the first two. And he says, what are you doing? And they said, well, well we, we hear you're the one. You're the one we've been waiting for. And then they asked Jesus, and where are you going? Where are you, where are you staying, Jesus? Where are you staying? And I like that. Where are you staying? Because staying usually means you are in a place that's pretty stationary. You've got, you know, you've got some roots somewhere. That's where you're staying. When I moved here, I moved here to stay. I didn't move here to visit. I moved here to stay. Many of us, when we moved to town, we moved to stay. We knew it wasn't a temporary position. It wasn't a temporary move. Yeah. We moved there to stay. Where are you staying? And I think there was a bigger question. Jesus, we see the anointing on you. We see a new ministry. We understand you've been baptized, but do you have staying power? Uh-oh. Do you have staying power? Are you able to stay with us? Are you able to stay here and grow this ministry with us. Uh-oh. Are you here to, to just be here shortly? Because if you're launching this major worldwide ministry, maybe you're just here for a little bit and then you're going all over the place. But we want to know you're staying. Are you willing to stay with us? Where are you staying, Jesus? And Jesus gives the wonderful, wonderful, wonderful answer. Jesus says, come along and see for yourself. Don't take John's word for it. Don't take the other people's words for it. Don't take the other folks that John baptized yesterday. Don't worry about the, you come. You come, you come, you come, you come. You come on with me. You come along with me. You're already following me. And now you already know who I am. And now you're going to find out that, yes, I do have staying power. And he turns back on them and says, come on along and see where I'm staying 
because you can stay. You know, I didn't have them read it, but they went home with him and stayed with him. They stayed with him. You see, they had staying power too. They were able to stay. They did not want to be out of the presence of Jesus. Think about that. Here's Jesus fresh from launching a new ministry, and two folks find him and ask him where he's staying. Are you the new Messiah, Jesus? Are you really the new Messiah? Are you really the one that's going to make all these changes? Are you really going to disrupt everything that's going on and all of the power that is in place right now? Are you really going to disrupt all the systems? Are you really going to fight for justice? Oh, my goodness. Jesus not only gave the answer for them, but he gave an enduring invitation that has lasted over 2,000 years. He gave an invitation that wasn't just for those two. Did you know Jesus is still building a ministry team today? Jesus is still building that ministry team that started that day. That day, 2,000 years ago, he starts looking over his shoulder and sees the two following him and then invites them to come along and see for themselves. You come along and see. Don't just take my word for it. Come and get to know me. Don't just take John's word for it. Don't just take somebody else's word for it. You get to come. You come on. Your curiosity is already there. You already see something different. You already see the anointing flowing. Come on over and stay with me. There's staying power here at Founders MCC. Jesus says, come along and see for yourself. Come. What an invitation. Just come. Just come. Just come and see for yourself. Come and taste the honey in the rock. Come and taste the bread of life. Come and taste this water from the well that will never run dry. Come and smell the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley. Come and touch for yourself. Come and touch my embodiment of God in flesh. Come and take, just come and touch it. Come and touch it. Come and, and feel the living waters rolling over you. Come and see the rock of ages. Come and experience the prince of peace for yourself. Come and trade that law for some grace. Are you tired of living under all of that law and all of those poor systems? Come with me and let's disrupt some systems. Come with me and let's walk out in freedom. Come and trade your flesh for some spirit and come and build. Let's build something together. Let's build the realm of God in the here and now. Come and come. Just come. You know, that second reading I wanted to go back to, or the, excuse me, the first reading I wanted to go back to, it was still happening a little bit later when Peter, one of those followers that, that uh, had joined Jesus a little bit after these two had joined, Peter fairly exploded with the good news. It's God's own truth, he says. Nothing could be plainer. God plays no favorites. It makes no difference who you are or where you're from. If you want God and are ready to do as God says, the door is open. The message God sent to the children of Israel that through Jesus Christ, everything is being put together again. Well, God's doing it everywhere, among everyone. Does that sound like any exclusions to you? I didn't hear any buts, any groups buts. It's everybody but this individual or that individual or this group or that group. No, no, no. You know the story of what happened in Judea. It began in Galilee after John preached a total life change. I like that. A total life change. Then Jesus arrived from Nazareth, anointed by God with the Holy Spirit, ready for action. Jesus got there ready. And he had been a long time preparing he was ready for action. He went through the country helping people and healing everyone who was beaten down by the enemy. He was able to do all of this 
because God was with him. He had accepted God's invitation to come and see for himself. John had, in, had, had accepted the invitation. Others had, in, had, had accepted Jesus' invitation. All three, Peter, obviously, had accepted God's invitation to come. Come and see for yourself. And so today, I want to share that invitation with you one more time. That Jesus is still here today. The Spirit of God is still here today. Saying, come along and see for yourself. Amen.
That was wonderful, thank you. Good morning. My name is Jenny Nichols. I am your Board of Directors member here this morning to bring you a few brief um, announcements. The Board of Directors would like to take a moment to thank those of you who were here yesterday and also during the week, especially Larry and Norm, who were here to do some cleaning and sprucing up. Um, the Ryland Room Annex, which is in the room directly behind us, and the front gardens out in front were cleaned up and they are ready for spring. Yes, thank you. Tomorrow is the day that we celebrate the life and the ministry of the late great Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So please be encouraged as you're able to participate in or volunteer for any one of the many community activities in his honor. And then on Tuesday, January 21st at 6.15, the Board of Directors will be having their monthly Board of Directors meeting up in the um, conference room upstairs. These meetings are open for everyone to attend. It'll give you the opportunity to become more familiar with the planning and the decisions that go into making this congregation and this church a great house of worship. And finally, next Saturday, January 25th, is free admission day for more than 40 museums in Los Angeles County. If it's interesting, you can go online to SoCalMuseums.org for more information. And now is the time in our service to receive your gifts and your offerings. Recently within myself and within this congregation, there's been a sense of hope, a sense of gratitude, a sense <clears throat> that something great is waiting to come to life. It is out of that gratitude for what, that God has blessed us and that I invite you to give as you're able so that we can continue to become that abundant example of Christ in this world today. So come along and see your gifts for yourself. Amen. spirit receive our offerings today as a sign of our intention to live out our identity as followers of Jesus Christ children of your realm and empowered by your spirit people we ask you to use these gifts and to use us to share your good news with the weary and worried world amen, amen. therefore with a grateful heart we say May God be with you. And also with you. 
Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to God. Please be seated. The following pastoral prayer is based on Martin Luther King Jr.'s prayer taken from The Prayer Tradition of Black People, written in 1956. Would you pray with me? O oh God, our Heavenly Parent, we thank you for this golden privilege to worship you, the only God of the universe. We come to you today grateful that you have kept us through the long night of the past and ushered into the challenge of the present and the bright hope of the future. We are mindful, O oh God, that humanity cannot save themselves, for humanity is not the measure of things, and humanity is not God. Bound by our chains of sin and finiteness, we know we need a Savior. We thank you, O oh God, for the spiritual nature of humanity. We are in nature, but we live above nature. Help us never to be let to let anyone or any condition pull us so low as to cause us to hate. Give us the strength to love our enemies and to do good to those who despitefully use us and persecute us. We thank you for your church founded upon your word that challenges us to do more than sing and pray, but to go out and work as though the very answer to our prayers depend on us and not upon you. Then finally, help us to realize the humanity was created to shine like the stars and live on through all eternity. Keep us, we pray, in perfect peace. Help us to walk together, pray together, sing together, and live together until that day when all God's children, black, brown, white, red, and yellow, will rejoice in one common band of humanity in the realm of our Lord and of our God, we pray. Amen. Amen. Now let us take a moment of silence and give God thanks for the blessings received and to pray for those in need. For these and all the prayers that are on our hearts, both spoken and unspoken, we pray to God as we sing together a prayer in the spirit of the way Jesus taught us to pray. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. In becoming one of us, you sent your only begotten Son, and in his baptism and in table fellowship, he took his place with sinners. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, 
to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are repressed, and to announce that the time had come when he would save your people. By his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church and made it with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Yes. And so we recall that on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, he blessed it, and gave thanks. Breaking this bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, blessed it, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Would you pray with me? And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and fruit of the vine, make them be for us the holy essence of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ. And by your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until it's our time to feast at this heavenly banquet. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, and in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Friends at Founders MCC and at MCCs around the world, we serve an open communion. That means that you don't have to be a member of this church or any church to come to the table of God. When you come forward, we'll take the bread Dip it in the non-fermented grape juice and place it on your tongue. Your server will then pray a short blessing over you. If you prefer to serve yourself, a station is set up to your right for you. Gluten-free wafers are also available upon request. Feel free to come alone or, with, or come with your significant other or others, your biological or your chosen family. All we ask is that you come as the ushers direct you. Would the acolytes and servers please prepare the feast?
that you heard one more time the message, the invitation to come and you followed. Keep following Jesus and know that you won't go wrong. Would you rise as you're able and join us in our closing song? you've enjoyed worship today come back come back and be with us keep following that invitation to come come and follow Jesus and be a part as we continue to build this ministry team together Shake hands and be friendly.